So for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a few different properties and we're going to write an equation of a line in slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept form looks like this. It's your y equals mx plus b. And we like slope-intercept form because as long as it's in this form, we know what the slope of our line is and we know what the y-intercept is. So when we're trying to write an equation in slope-intercept form, those are the two pieces of things that we need to know in order to write the equation of the line. Y is always part of the line, X is always part of the line. We need to input the slope and we need to input the Y-intercept. So based off what we're given, we need to figure out how do we find those two things so that we can input it into the equation and have our slope-intercept form of the line. For example, A, we want to write an equation in slope-intercept form of the line that is perpendicular to x minus 5y is equal to 3, and that also has the point 5, 3. Okay. So typically when it comes to creating an equation in slope-intercept form, one of the first things that I always focus on is how do I find the slope of this line? Now, based off the information that they gave us, we're going to use the fact that it's perpendicular to the line x minus 5y, is equal to 3. So this is not the equation of our line. Our line is perpendicular to this. What it means for lines to be perpendicular is they happen across perfectly like this. Think of a four-way stop sign where it creates a 90 degree angle on it. So maybe this is the line that they gave us. We need to figure out the equation of this line is what we're doing here. And what we need to pull from this equation is lines that are perpendicular to it. If you were to multiply their slopes together, you would get a negative 1. So the first thing that I need to do is take this equation, put it in slope-intercept form, solve it for y, so that I know what the slope of this line is. Once I know what the slope of this line is, I can do a quick, a quick tweak to it, and I'll know exactly what the slope of the line that I need is. So first things first, take that equation, solve it for y. So I'm going to subtract x on both sides. x minus x cancels, leaving us with negative 5y is equal to negative x plus 3, and divide that negative 5 out on both sides, so everything needs to be divided by it, to get y is equal to negative over negative cancels. Remember, there's 1 understood to be in front of that x, so this is technically 1 fifth x, plus and a minus back here makes that a negative 3 fifths. Now, typically slope, so slope is the coefficient of your x term there. So the slope of this line is 1 fifth. That's not the slope that I want. The slope that I want, when lines are perpendicular to each other, what you need to do to get the slope that you need is flip that fraction around and change the sign. Flip and change. Okay, that's what you need to do. If I flip 1 fifth, I get 5 over 1, or just 5. 1 fifth was positive, mine needs to be negative. Again, flip it, change the sign. So the slope of the line that I want the slope is going to be negative 5. And I know that by finding the slope of this one, flipping that fraction, changing the sign. That's it. So I know that my slope is negative 5, which means I'm almost there. If I'm writing an equation of the line, so far I know y is equal to negative 5x plus b. So now I just need to figure out what my y-intercept is. So going back to what they gave us, they gave us that our line is perpendicular to this one. And they gave us the 0.53. Now, the 0.53 is not a y-intercept. We can't just take any of that and plug it directly into b here. But it does represent an x and a y value on my line. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the equation that I have so far, the one that I've built so far, all I've done is plugged in negative 5 for our slope. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this x and y that they gave us, and I'm going to plug that 5 in for x. I'm going to plug that 3 in for y, and what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to solve for b. So let's see. So that means that y is equal to 3, x is equal to 5, and I'm solving for b here. So the first thing we need to do is multiply negative 5 times 5 to get negative 25, and add that 25 over to the other side. That means that b is equal to 28. So that means I can wrap up my equation. I know that the slope of my line is negative 5 and that the y-intercept is a positive 28. So the equation of my line is y is equal to negative 5x 
plus 28. All right, so we'll put that in right over here. Let's move on to the next example. So for example B, we're told that we need to write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form, and we know that our line is parallel to 2x minus 5 is equal to 3, and it contains the point 5, 3. So the first thing I'm going to focus on is the fact that it's parallel to this line. So what it means to be parallel, it means that it runs perfectly side by side to each other, never crossing, never intersecting. But the most important thing about parallel lines that's going to help us here is that parallel lines have the same slope, same exact slope. So if I know the slope of this line, then I know the slope of my line. So in order to find the slope of this line, solve for y. Subtract 2x on both sides. It's going to cancel on the left. Drop down that negative 5y is equal to, always put your x, for, x term in front, so negative 2x plus 3. And then all we have to do is divide everything by the coefficient of a negative 5. That's going to cancel over here, giving us y is equal to negative, negative cancels. Otherwise, that gives us 2 fifths x. Positive over a negative is negative. We get a 3 fifths over here. Slope is the coefficient of the x term, so that means the slope of this line is 2 fifths. And since parallel lines have the same slope, that means the slope of my line is also 2 fifths. So, so far, we can plug in the slope for m, and we get y is equal to 2 fifths x plus b. Now, all we need to figure out is what the y-intercept is. Remember, in creating your line, you need to find the slope, and you need to find the y-intercept. So, on top of telling us that our line was parallel to this one, it also gave us the point 5, 3. So what that tells us then is that we can take the line that we've created so far, we can take this point, knowing that this point is on our line, remember that a point represents an x and a y value, I do have an x and a y right over here, so that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this x and this y, plug it into the x and the y in my equation, solve for b, and then I can wrap up my equation over here. So that means y is equal to 3, x is equal to 5, and we're solving for b. Because 2 fifths is a fraction, I'm going to write 5 as 5 over 1 as a fraction. So I can actually see here this 5 cancels with this 5 down here, leaving me with 2 over 1, which is just 2. Right? Or you could have multiplied 2 times 5 is 10, but 10 divided by 5 is 2, whichever way you simplify your fractions. Uh, regardless, we get a 2, drop down the b, subtract that 2 on both sides, and we get that b is equal to 1. That means we can go back right over here. We can plug in, let's see, 2 fifths x plus 1, and that is our equation of the line that is parallel to this one, but contains the point 5, 3. Let's work on our last example. All right. So for example C, we're given the points 5, 3, and negative 1, 8. So we know that both of these points are on our line. Now remember, in order to write an equation of a line in slope-intercept form, you need two things. You need to know the slope, and you need to know the y-intercept. Now we were not given the slope, and neither one of these points is a y-intercept. I know that because a y-intercept will always have zero for your x value. Okay, neither one of these has zero, so I know neither one of them is a y-intercept. Okay, so we need to figure out how we're going to find the slope and how we're going to find the y-intercept based off of just this. Now, if you're given two points, you can definitely find the slope by plugging into the slope formula. If you remember, the slope formula is m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm just going to say that 5, 3 is the point x1, y1. And this one over here is x2, y2. If I plug that directly into my formula, let's see, y2 is 8 minus y1 is 3 over x2 is negative 1 minus x1 is 5. When we subtract these in the numerator, x minus 3 is a 5. Negative 1 minus 5 is a negative 6. So we get the slope um, negative 5, 6 is the slope of our line. 
So thus far, for our equation, we can say y is equal to a negative 5, 6x plus b. So now we just need to figure out how do we find our y-intercept. Now, again, all we're given is these two points. So at this point here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the equation that we've written so far. y is equal to negative 5, 6x plus b. And what we need to do is we need to take one of our points. We don't need to grab both of them. Pick one of the points. I typically pick a point that has smaller numbers um, or just whichever one I honestly think looks nicer than the other. In this sense, let me see, I am going to pick, God, neither one of these is going to be any prettier, so let me just go with 5, 3, literally because it's positive. That's my reasoning for it. So that means that I'm going to plug in 5 for x and I'm going to plug in 3 for y into my equation. That's going to allow me to solve for b. So y is equal to 3 is equal to negative 5, 6 times x, which is 5. I'm going to write that as a fraction and put it 5 over 1, plus b. So we're going to solve this thing for b, and then that's going to let us plug it right in over here and wrap up our equation. So let's deal with this fraction. So multiplying fractions is straight across. Negative 5 times 5 is negative 25, and 6 times 1 is 6, plus b. In order to solve for b, we need to add that 25, the 25th 6 to both sides. So it cancels on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, we had a 3. Keep in mind, we are adding 25 over 6 to it. So that does mean that we need to get some common denominators so that we can add these fractions together. Common denominator of 1 and 6 is 6. In order to change 3 over 1 to a denominator of 6, we need to multiply by 6 over 6, making this be 25 6 plus 18 over 6. Add those together. Again, keep the common denominator. Add your numerators. 25 plus 18 is a 43, I believe. So that means b is equal to 43 over 6, which means we found our slope by plugging it into the slope formula. We found b by plugging everything into the equation. So now we can wrap it up by putting everything together y is equal to negative 5, 6, x plus 43, 6. Otherwise, that wraps up this problem.